Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you a very simple and elegant trick that basically every NuGet package is using and also the ASP.NET Core framework itself to allow for easy options configuration. It is very simple, it's very elegant, its use cases do not stop on what we're going to see here. I'm also going to mention other places where you can use it too and it's actually used by many other languages in other places. It just makes configurations and settings so, so much easier. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe or ring the notification bell. And for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. Now, before I move on, I want to let you know that my brand new course, From Zero to Hero, Integration Testing in ASP.NET Core, is now out. I'm super proud of it. I put a lot of effort in teaching you the right things that you would see in a big company doing things right. It applies to APIs, MVC, Blazor applications. It shows you how you can properly integration test your application and what does it mean to integration test an application, what should be replaced, what shouldn't, how you should deal with that. We're touching on Docker, on Playwright, we're touching on so many advanced state-of-the-art things you would see. So if you want to buy the course, the first 300 of you can use the discount code you see on your screen right now and down below. I highly recommend you check it out. Integration testing is such a crucial part of your testing suite and it's as important and in some cases for some people more important than unit testing. Some people tend to skip unit testing and do integration testing just because of the value that it brings. Now I think you need both but I can totally see that argument. So check the link in the description, use the code. Trust me when I say these run out quickly and I hope you have as much fun taking the course as I had making it. Now back to the video. All right so let me show you what I'm talking about so we can all be on the same page. So Let's go to the program.cs and I just have a normal web API here, nothing special. Now, do you see all these add methods or all these use methods or even this map one actually? These are all pretty standard setup methods. Basically, all the add ones mean add something to the ISC container and all the use mean um, add some form of middleware and then map means map something. In this case, controllers, it could be endpoints, it could be anything. But if I go to pretty much any of those methods, and I do my control space, which shows me my options, you will see that I have this form of options over here. I have this object, which behind the scenes is actually, if I hover over it, um, an MVC options object. And what I can do is I can specify a bunch of configuration like SSL port, filters, conventions, cache profiles, a bunch of different settings, which all of them have a default value, but I can also override them. But as you can see, I'm not doing the following. The overload doesn't say new MVC options and then I have this huge object where I can configure any of those. No, what happens instead is I have an action of MVC options. Let's go ahead and see in the method itself what this looks like. I'm going to scroll down and as you can see over here, this has an action of MVC options, not the MVC options object. And this is important. That's what we're going to focus on. So what this allows me to do is have this look and feel where I can do this. I just have the options and I only implement the things I want. And this is a very, very extremely common approach. A mediator uses it, Automapper, like all of these big libraries use this approach and the framework itself. I, if I go here as well in Swagger, Swagger does the same thing. I can configure things like this and override some default. And I can even go down here and set here. And then I have again more options. Uh, so route templates and other things. Like So as you can see, this pattern is used everywhere and it's very, very common. But how does it work? Well, I'm going to show you how it works right now. I'm going to go ahead and create an extensions folder first. So I'm going to say extensions here. And first I'm going to create my awesome extensions, which is just a silly name so I can just get started. And I'm just going to say static here and I'm also going to make an extra class. So I'm going to make my own options class effectively. I'm going to say class and then my uh, awesome options. And just for the sake of the example, I'm going to have two things. So first, let's say I have some form of prefix. So only stuff with this prefix will be accepted. And then let's say I have some age filter as well. So anyone above this age would not be able to do something with my system. Just a couple of examples just to show you how they come together. And once I do that, I can go here and I can say public static void add awesomeness. And I need an extension on the I service collection, which is my services. And then, like I said before, I want to do my 
awesome options. Instead, I'm going to run an action with my awesome option. And I'm going to make this nullable because I want the user to provide nothing because maybe this method provides some defaults. Let's say that, for example, by default, the age filter is, I don't know, 50. Here we go. Um, and then I can say options over here and set this to null. And once I do that, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this options object. But first, here's how the look and feel is of that extension method. I go here, I say builder.services.addAwesomeness and I can either provide nothing because that's nullable or I can provide the option. And I can say option and then prefix and say I only want things that start with Nick. And maybe just say that the age filter is different. I have a, just a random one here, which is a completely different filter than the default. So once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and stick a breakpoint here. I'm going to show you what comes in. So what we have here, if I expand this, is a delegate. A delegate is just effectively a method that's bound to be executed. The thing is, I don't really have the data in that method at this point. So how can I register this options object without having its materialized form? Well, actually, there is a configure method over here in the services which accepts just that. It accepts the action of some option and then it's going to take that, do some magic behind the scenes and register that option object as you'd expect. So if I do that, then I can go in this controller that says options controller and I can inject a private read only I options of my awesome option. Let me just do that, inject it from the constructor and then I'm just going to return options dot value. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to run this and bring postman in. And when I call that now, as you can see, I am getting all those values, even though I never instantiated that object, this configure method knows how to do it behind the scenes and it registers it appropriately with the options. I can also have the I options monitor, snapshot, all of those things will be registered for me. So if you're dealing with ASP.NET Core, then that's how you should be doing this really. But I want you to know what happens behind the scenes because just knowing how to call the configure method doesn't really paint the full picture. So let's go back here and let me just comment this method out. I don't want to use configure. I want to let you know how it actually works. So the way this works is first you create your uh, awesome option. So my awesome option object equals new my awesome option and you don't use any parameters it is just the default instantiation of that class and then here's the magic this action delegate thing over here this is an action that accepts one parameter it's effectively a void method that has one parameter of type my awesome option so what you want to do here is you want to say options and then you want to have a null check because this could be null and then you're going to say invoke so you invoke effectively that action that method and you pass down my awesome option and once you do that what happens is the settings that you have in this action are being copied and materialized in this option and then after that you can register things in di in any way that you want you can wrap it in an option you can do whatever you want but this is how you can deconstruct things and take it to its raw form and this approach isn't really just used for di it's used on other methods as well i've seen it in cosmos db libraries i've seen it in dynamo db libraries i've seen it in so so many libraries so this approach is a very common one it's a very nice one because you don't have to deal with objects and stuff like that you just implement the delegate and you pass down the methods and just to show you how this works i'm gonna go ahead and debug this so we hit the breakpoint. I go over it at this point. As you can see, there is nothing. I have the default age filter and then no prefix here. And then I can go back and I step over this invocation. And as you can see, both the age and the name have been implemented. So that's how things work behind the scenes. And you can go ahead if you want to and then register it as an option and add it in the eye and so on. And really that's it. This is how simple it is, but also how effective it is. And I highly recommend you use this. I know in companies I work for, we use this internally as well to guide people into a certain type of configuration approach. So I highly recommend you give it a go, play around with it and see what you can do with it. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.